There's more stinging nettle and jewelweed here. And all these vines here are grape leaf. You can see the little tendrils coming off. And uh, there is a look-alike called moonseed, but it won't have these two little things that come off. But moonseed has very similar berries, and uh, you don't want to eat those because those are toxic. But this is just wild grape, and sometimes you'll see little bunches of grapes growing and you can just pop those in their mouth when they're dark purple. It's a really nice day out. It's uh, surprisingly cool for Ohio in the summer, but... Okay, this here... <clears throat> this is called yarrow. And what you can do is you can lay it near your shelter and it supposedly will repel insects and bugs uh, from this flower. So. If you ever need to have a bug-free shelter, laying some of this down is a pretty good idea. Not sure how effective it is, but it's better than nothing, I'm sure. The distinct yarrow leaves can be eaten raw or cooked, and, along with the flowers, can be brewed into tea. Okay, so this plant is called Rubus. Well, that's the genus. Uh, I believe it's raspberry. A lot of people might look at this and think it's poison ivy because it's got these three leaves and the shape of the leaves is kind of similar, but the serrations are different. If you look closely, there's like a few main serrations with smaller ones, which means it's called doubly serrated. And the stem also has all these thorns on it, which poison ivy does not have. And actually there's this sort of milky powder on this. I don't know if you can see that, but you can sort of rub it off. And the general rule is that if it's a raspberry, a black raspberry, it'll have this sort of white stem where you can rub the powder off. And if it's a blackberry, the stem will be either green or brown when the fruit are out. It's not really an important difference because any berry that sort of looks like a raspberry or blackberry in this area is edible. But uh, it's just something fun to know. So this is a plant that's really similar to thistle in terms of how it looks. You can see it's got these really pretty little flowers and a bunch of thorns. And it actually doesn't have too many uses, I suppose you could maybe use the spiny part as a comb or something. But I've actually seen in other people's videos, people talk about how these leaves can sometimes catch water because of the way they're shaped. And I suppose that's a good use. Uh, of course, if it's been sitting there too long, you don't want to drink it probably. Now back here is a plant, elderberry. You can see it's got this sort of clump or umbel of uh, flower buds. And earlier in the season, it'll have a bunch of white flowers and it looks a lot like wild carrot or any of the other plethora of plants that have flowers like that. Now the leaves are opposite and they have these fine serrations and that's one of the main ways you can tell that this is elderberry. The berries on this plant will eventually ripen and turn a dark black color and you can eat those or you can make a tea out of the plant and it's really good for curing fever and other sort of sickness and ailments you might have. So it's really good and I'm really excited to try the berries. This is uh, an ash tree, and from the looks of it, I think it's a green ash. There's three main ashes in Ohio, which is blue, white, and uh, green. Now, with blue ashes, the stem here would be sort of square instead of round. But with green ash, when you take one of these uh, little leaf... Well, technically, the whole thing is a leaf, and these are leaflets. But when you take one of these off, the scar is shaped like a D. And that's how you know it's a green ash as opposed to any of the others. And the reason I'm pointing this out is because we've had the emerald ash borer in Ohio and that's been killing a lot of the ashes so it's really nice to see this. And also the wood is really good for making handles for like axes or for making baseball bats and things like that. Very commonly used in that sort of thing. So in case you don't have anything to spark tinder with, there are two plants that might come in handy if you're good enough with friction fire which I'm not quite there yet, but first one is this, which is goldenrod. And when this stem turns brown, you can take all the leaves off and uh, cut it off and use that as sort of a friction fire spindle. And actually in the winter, it'll also produce a lot of like little fluffy seeds that are also pretty decent tinder. They're not the best, sometimes they're hard to catch, but uh, better than nothing. And then back there, those tall plants with the stalks, there's mullen, 
Now the leaves are really big and fluffy, so if you're ever doing business in the wilderness, it makes really good toilet paper. The stalks, the flowers on those, you can use to make a tea, which will help with respiratory problems. I've heard you can also smoke it for respiratory problems, which seems counterintuitive, but... Um, and also, the stalk of this makes a really good spindle for a friction fire when it's brown. A lot of people like using it with a bow drill and things like that. And as you can see, they get pretty big. So. Now over here, if you walk with me a little bit, you see some more of the plants that we've talked about here, elderberry, things of that sort. And up here is mulberry. Now, there's two common types of mulberry, red and white. Red mulberry is native, white mulberry is invasive. There's a really good way to remember that and I'll let you figure that out. But red mulberry is fuzzy on the bottom, whereas white is smooth. And the best way to feel is with your tongue. And this actually feels kind of fuzzy, but maybe my tongue is just messed up. You'll most likely find white mulberry around. Red mul mulberry is pretty rare. Um, but either one produces fruits that sort of look like a raspberry. They're really delicious. Kind of have a sweet taste without any tartness. It's almost like eating a fig in a way. But a uh, beautiful tree. It's amazing to be back. We made our way up a forested hill as the setting sun cast the sky in a pink hue. As we reached the top, the evening sky glowed in shades of lavender and orange, and the crescent moon shone brightly. It was a serene backdrop to silhouetted trees and hills in the distance.